Hello everyone, my name is Rosalind. If you have not been here before, I don't even know how to describe myself. I just, you know, release stuff, anything to make you healthier, mentally or physically, you're probably gonna get it on this channel. The one thing that we're gonna talk about today is intermittent fasting. I think I said in my last video, if you had told me six months ago, I would be even thinking about intermittent fasting, I'd have been like, ah, no, not happening. <laughs> no, I can't do it, <laughs> no. What do you mean eating eight hour window? But for some reason, I don't even remember why I started doing it, but I started doing it and I think it's like a challenge to my ADHD brain. And so when I started doing it, I was like, oh, wait a minute, Th this may work, <laughs> you know? And I started to like it. And most importantly, it worked for me. Um, if you're over 50, if you're a woman, especially going through menopause like myself, you are going to struggle with losing weight. There's just probably no way around it unless you are naturally skinny. But I've seen some people who have been skinny all their lives and menopause will attack. <laughs> it's like, nope, your weight loss time, you're keeping your weight areas is over. <laughs> you know, so it's hard because, you know, your body's going through all these changes and the hormones and the estrogens and the progesterones, progesterones. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. So what was easy to do, you know, before you were in menopause, you know, something like losing weight, which some for some people is still hard to do, even when you're not in menopause. When you're in menopause, it's hard. You know, it's it's hard. It's hard. Trust me. And I found that the only thing that has worked for me is intermittent fasting. Now, at the grand scheme of things, let me say this before we even get into this. Um, at the end of the day, it's about what is easiest for you to do and what you can sustain. Everybody can sustain intermittent fasting. Everybody can sustain keto. <laughs> I have tried keto. Keto is not for me. It doesn't say it doesn't work, but it's not for me long term. It's not. My thing is, if I can't keep doing it forever, if I can't do it when I'm not trying to lose weight, I'm not going to be able to do it when I'm trying to lose weight. You know, so it's like... Intermittent fasting is not a big deal to me as far as, you know, having a certain window to eat. So it's like, this is okay. I can do this. Even if I didn't need to lose weight or felt like I didn't want to lose weight, I would still be totally fine with intermittent fasting. So my thing is at the end of the day, find what works for you. And if something doesn't work for you, find something else. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's about cutting your calories. You know, if you cut your calories and you expend more energy than you're eating, you're going to lose weight no matter what you're doing. It may not be healthy. Now, as I said, you can do the you can do the cookie diet, eat cookies three times a day. <laughs> you may lose weight, but you're going to lose somewhere else, too. You're going to lose nutritional ways. You know, there's all these things that goes into your decisions on how you want to lose weight. So let's not try to do shortcuts you know, the cookie diet sounds good, but it's not good for us, <laughs> you know. So let me give you a little bit of information on different ways you can intermittent fast. Because I know, you know, for the most part, if you research on YouTube or anywhere else, a lot of people will talk about the 16-8, where you spend 16 hours fasting and eight hours, you have an eight hour window of eating. Um, that works for some people, and some people it doesn't work, you know. Depending on how you work, you know, if you commute to work and you, you know, it's hard. I've tried it when I was still working at a job where I had to be in the office. It was very hard to do 16-8 for me because in the morning when I got to work, I was ready to eat <laughs> because I had to walk and all this other stuff when I got up, you know, to get to work because I'm in the city, you know, I, I live in New York. So it's like you do a lot of walking and I was just like, I'm not waiting till noon to eat. You can hang that up. And... A lot of people talk about it being from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. You do not have to do 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can do 10 to 6. You can do 9 to 5. You know, your eight-hour window is for you to decide what works for you. So don't listen to everyone else when they're like, oh, start at 12, you don't need breakfast. If you like breakfast, eat breakfast. I'm a breakfast person. I can eat breakfast all day. Breakfast for lunch, breakfast for dinner, <laughs> breakfast for breakfast, that's me. So it's like breakfast is important to me. It may not be important to other people, but I feel kind of weird when I don't start the morning without breakfast. But breakfast doesn't have to be 8 a.m. either. Breakfast could be at 10 a.m. And if you do want to do 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., breakfast can be at 12 p.m. 
trust me, knock yourself out. It's not about the, when you're doing your eight hours, it's the fact that you're doing your eight hours. And that's your eight hour window of eating. So don't get caught up in everyone else, you know, oh, you know, start at 12, get rid of breakfast. Do, do you, do what works for you. I always say, if it's gonna stick, it has to work for you. So I have my notes here. So if you see me looking down, it's because, you know, I put some work in people, I do. <laughs> so a starting, they say a good starting point for people who are beginners to intermittent fasting is 12-12. I could do 12-12 without even trying. But it's a good starting point for people who graze a lot. Because when you think about it, before like before I even thought about intermittent fasting, I could easily eat for 12 hours. You know, I could easily eat in a 12-hour window normally. Sometimes past that. I could eat breakfast like 6 o'clock. Let's say if I eat breakfast, not even at 6. That's a little early for me. But let's say if I ate breakfast at 8. And then I had lunch. Then I had dinner. Then I had snacks. <laughs> and then by the time I go to bed, it's probably between 10 and 11. And I'm probably still snacking until 9. You know, this was back in the days, old Ross. That's, that's a lot of eating. That's a lot of room to eat a lot of crap. <laughs> you know? So, as I said, if you can just structure yourself in the beginning, if you think it's not going to work for you, if you're thinking, I can't do this, start with 12-12. Eat from 8 to 8. Have your window be from 8 in the morning to 8 at night. That is not hard at all. That should be easy peasy. And I think once you start there, you'll be like, oh, this is too easy. I need to do something else. I got something for you. Let's do 1410. 1410. So let's see. Now, my math is a little shady sometimes. So if it's off, forgive me. <laughs> but um, let's say you do 1410 instead. So let's say you eat breakfast at 9 and you finish at, what is that, 9 to 7? Don't make me count on my fingers. But anyway, <laughs> if you that's that's not even bad still, you know? That's still not bad. Let's start to keep things even so that my math is not jacked up. Let's say we started at noon without fast. And we're doing 10 hours. So we're doing 10, we're doing 12 to 10. You know, that's a lot. You know, even if you did 10 to 8. Oh, here we go. Now my math is back. <laughs> Um, that's not bad. That's a long time. That's a large, in my opinion, being that I've done 16 eights and sometimes 17 hour fast and 20 hours. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. You know, that's not bad. But, and some days I'm not going to say, but some days I still do 14, 10, not as much, but like when I used to work, I would do 14, 10 because I need, I had such a long commute. Let's say I would get to work and I would eat breakfast around nine and I would give myself till like seven to get home, you know, because that would give me enough time to commute back home and eat something before seven, you know. So I say if you're working like that, if you're doing a long commute like I was, because it was like I had it took me like almost an hour and a half to get to work and it would take me at least two hours to get home. You know, so by the time I would get home, it was between 6.15 and 6.30 at night. So I had to race in and eat between 6.30 and 7. You know, but I would get it in. But if I didn't get it in like that, I would eat a bigger lunch at work. And then when I got home, I would snack on something or I would have a protein shake. Anything to get me within my window to finish eating at 7. But if you're eating breakfast later, if you're eating, you know, at, at 10 or 11, or even 12, if you can do 12, then you'll have a bigger window when you get home. It just depends, you know. But I would say just, you know, figure out what works for you. But that's 14.10. 15.9 I've done too. 15.9 is when I was kind of easing in, when I needed room to like, I was trying to do a little closer to 16.8, you know. Because for the most part, I'll tell you, for me, I can do, I probably pretty much easily now can do 16.8 easily without even thinking about 16 8 but when i was working outside of the house i would do between the 14 10s and the 16 8s it would vary according to when i was in the office and when i was working from home so i was working then twice in the office two days a week in the office three days at home and because of that i would um, try to, you know fluctuate it so that it didn't feel so torturous and so strict being that I didn't know when I was getting home sometimes. So 59 is one. 
when a lot of times people don't pay attention to that, but it's like, I do, you know, people tend to stick with 16 eights, you know, but I would fluctuate between the two. Now, where am I at now? Tracking calories, tracking calories. Um, I still track my calories. I've always tracked my calories though. I track my macros. I should say I track my macros more than my calories because I want to keep my protein high. I want to keep my fats kind of eh. And I want to keep my carbs semi-low. Low not meaning like 20 and 30 carbs. I'm not doing keto here. My carbs around net 85. I, I do like around a net 85 carbs, which is good for me. So at least if I go up to 100, I'm still fine. You know, depending on how much I move around, if I'm exercising, I can do a little bit more carbs. I can do a lot more carbs. But um, even though you're intermittent fasting, it doesn't mean... For some people, they do eat whatever they want. I don't know how that works for them because I would be gaining weight even if I was intermittent fasting. As I said, if you're taking in too many calories at the end of the day, you're still going to gain weight. It's not going to work for you no matter what you do. Whether you intermittent fast, whether you keto, anything else, it's still not going to be good for you. So my thing is, I still keep track of my macros, but that's me. Some people, if you eat well, which I would think if you were already eating well, this wouldn't be the video for you anyway, because you're already there. But if you're, you know, not, if you're eating, if you're not eating well, and you know you need to eat better, and you have a smaller window, you tend to think a little harder about what you're eating in that window, because you know you only have but so much time, you know, to get your calories in. Um, being that I'm home full time working remotely, it's much easier now to do that because I can cook my own, my own food. I can, you know, I can stop eating at a certain time and not worry if I'm going to be able to, you know, to get my calories in and I can keep track of things. It's just so much easier. So weight loss so far. Um, I've taken off for the holidays. I admit I, um, yeah. I, 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 that was what I did on purpose for myself because I have been in, intermittent fasting for days and, I mean for days, excuse me, I've been intermittent fasting for months and I just wanted to really be able to enjoy the holidays. I know a lot of people are hard on themselves during the holidays. I was just like, I'm just not going to do that this year. I'm going to enjoy myself and pretty much give myself a little time to eat what I want, which feels weird. So it's like I can't wait to go back to intermittent fasting again after the new year. And it's not because of the new year I'm doing it. It's because that's usually the time when usually we stop eating crap. So it's not because of the new year that I'm doing this because this is something I've, I've already been doing. But I'm getting back on strictly doing intermittent fasting for the new year. And um, because I know I'm going out to eat for New Year's. And so I know it's not going to be healthy. And I just want the liberty of eating what I want. And I think sometimes that's a good thing. You know, and that's a good thing with intermittent fasting, too. If you can, if you can bring yourself to do it, don't intermittent fast on, like, the weekends. Give your body a break from intermittent fasting because you know you can get back on the wagon on Monday, you know. And just like any other change of eating habits, you want to give yourself a little wiggle room to kind of have stuff you like in between. I mean, you know at a certain point when you're trying to do best for your body that you're going to eat better. And so because of that, it's okay to have cake sometimes, like I'm doing now. <laughs> I made the mistake of making myself my own lemon pound cake that I always never used to eat, but I used to make it for other people because I have my home bakery. And I see why people like what I bake <laughs> because I'm just like the lemon pound cake um, has been calling me the last few days. And if I tell you I have... Definitely going over my calories the last couple of days. I'm like, yeah, let me get on this elliptical. Yeah, and do some videos. So that's what I've been doing. So, <laughs> so as I said, we all have our thing, you know. But after New Year's, I probably won't wait till after New Year's to intermittent fast. But I'm not, but in, the, in my frame that I can eat, I'm probably going to eat what I want. Yeah. So I'm going to have like eight hours to eat what I want, which is kind of dangerous. But I don't think I've been as bad, but I know I've gone over my calories. I know it. And it's because I keep track of my macros. I I still know what I'm doing, even though I know I'm not doing right. <laughs> you know, I'm human, just like we all are, you know. But yeah, I just wanted to give you a little background on um, intermittent fasting and how it can help you to lose weight if you're struggling. Um, it works better if you're eating better, you know, and for me, it works better if I'm keeping track of what I'm eating. Um, 
because I know I'm not always eating perfect, you know, some perfect people out there, but <laughs> you know, I know if I'm not eating perfect, that it helps me, it helps keep me accountable for what I am eating. And when I see what I'm eating, or if I see my, my weight doesn't drop, you know, I weigh myself every two weeks. Um, if weighing yourself is a struggle for you, don't do it. Just pay attention to your way your clothes fit. But for me, I weigh myself every two weeks. And because I weigh myself every two weeks, it kind of allows me to know when I'm falling off the rails. Because I've found that if I don't weigh myself, I will fool myself into believing that I'm okay when I'm not. <laughs> when I know I'm not okay. So I'm just like, no, we're not doing that again. We're going to stick with the scale and do it every two weeks. And that's what I do. I weigh in every two weeks. So... Um, and I have a really good scale that tells me like body mass, body fat, bone density, you know, the whole shebang so that I can pay attention to them little things. It's not just the weight. It's like, well, you know, you gained muscle. So yes, you, it looks like you gained weight. So I can pay attention to those things. So hopefully this video helps you. <laughs> and hopefully if you decide to go down to in the intimate fasting journey that, um, uh, make it an enjoyable journey. Because I'm telling you, it's not that bad. It's really not. And it works. Um, there are other people online that you can see on YouTube that have done intermittent fasting and have no shame and will stand up there in their drawers. I'm not that one. <laughs> if you would like to see pictures, there are plenty on YouTube of people who have lost on intermittent fasting. It does work. It definitely does work if done correctly. So, I hope that that has helped. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.